What's going on, y'all? It's me, Troy. And I'm here, of course, again with another other, another video. I can't talk um, because I want a nap. That's why I'm ready to get a nap. So uh, I'm here to share March Mystery Madness kind of wrap up, and I have to say that I enjoyed it. I read every single thing that I put on that list except one book for a different reason, which w it'll crop up later on in, in the year for me personally. And um, yeah, I want to just make a quick share of what I thought of each of these books because I was excited to read them. And I got to make sure I come up here and tell you why they did or didn't work. So the first book that I read was The Crime at Black Dudley by Marjorie Allingham. Categorically, this is the first book in her Albert, I believe his name is Campion series, you know, published in 1929. But narratively, it is the story of a gentleman named George who is invited to, I think he's like a scientist or some sort or a health profession. Um, he's invited to this manor house. Where unfortunately the head of the manor house ends up being ends up dying. Um, the suspicion is that it's of a heart attack, but the further suspicion is that he was possibly murdered. And then of course by the end of the book we find out exactly what happened to him. So here's the interesting thing about this book, The Crime at Black Dudley. Because I love Golden Age fiction, it did really keep me gripped in reading the book. But the thing is that it 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 is the trope of the manor house mystery in which someone dies within the manor house party no one could get in no one could get out but then on top of that margaret marjorie allingham stacks on this crime syndicate this crime boss that's within the manor house this individual and all of his different goons are there on top of a host of different suspects who could have possibly killed the the proprietor of the manor house there's a lot of stuff with real estate and deeds and heritage um going about but you know we're just keeping things on the surface so with that being said this manor house is filled with a lot of different um secret passageways you can go to a cupboard and follow a passageway and come out of a trunk just filled with it and as i was reading the book and then as i was kind of taking on the character of Albert Campion and realizing he was that kind of weaselly, sly character who seemed to have all the answers and who just kind of knew everything and was leading the other characters along. Something in me was saying, is this satirical? Is this a satirical take on the Golden Age, although it was published within that period, Golden Age crime whodunit novel? You know, is this, is this writer being satirical as it concerns like an Agatha Christie and so when I left because it's so outlandish it was fairly outlandish when all the secret passageways and the crime syndicate people were all stacked onto the whole thing I mean I'm talking about it was stacked so when I finished reading the book I had to ask myself well let's do a little research and then it comes to find out that it is the at least the character I found of Albert Campion is a parody of Dorothy L. Sayers, Peter Whimsey character. And when I saw that, I was like, oh yeah, it makes sense. That's the feeling that I got from reading The Crime of Black Dudley. Like, it was not serious. It wasn't, I mean, that's not really how I want to put, want to put it, but yeah, it was kind of like it was poking fun at the manor house trope as well as characters like Peter Whimsey, who, you know, they got the monocle and they're, you know, sly, like I said, and Weasley when it comes to the character of Albert Campion. But the problem is that once I kind of came to terms with that, I was just like, well, shoot, I might as well just read a Peter Whimsey. I might as well just stick with Dorothy L. Sayers. Like, I don't want nobody who's going to play in my face, right? Maybe after, later on, I, I can I can take her on, uh, Allingham on, but... I'm like, I, if you feel, I feel like you're playing in my face, then I, probably, I don't really want to read too much of your work, right? So, although I did enjoy the book, and I had to do a lot of freezing of uh, disbelief at certain things, and, and, and had really was kind of, at one point, I was really struggling with the, just feeling like, am I being fun housed? You know, this is utterly ridiculous, and I did not have that expectation of it to be a parody of, of work. I lost my thought here, but I think that I'm going to put things on hold when it, when it comes to more and more Allingham, Allingham's work. So, fairly speaking, I enjoyed it. Um, it did 
call to all of the little bit of things that I love about Golden Age Whodunit Mysteries, about Manor House. It was just kind of over the top, satirical, parody, and that's where the draw was for me. So not necessarily a bad thing, but at the same time, it's just like, as I expressed, I might as well read my Peter Wimsey books because I ain't got time to be playing games with Mar Marjorie Allingham and her Albert Campion character. Don't be playing in my face like that. So that's it. Um, if you've read these books, please, please recommend like the like w w when are we going to get out when she's going to office going to get out this phase and move us along. Please let me know. Other than that, that's kind of all I got to say. Like, we'll see. So let's see what else we'll talk about next when it comes to March Mystery Madness. Thank you so much for watching. Peace.